Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be painting a Space Marine Praetor start to finish. And first of all I want to say a huge thank you to my YouTube channel sponsors Goblin Gaming. Please check the description box down below and you'll find a direct link to Goblin Gaming's web store so you can go and check them out for yourselves. As always guys, this is going to be a long video, so please go grab yourselves a nice hot drink and we'll get started. After priming the miniature using Vallejo Polyurethane Primer, I first of all start painting the head, which I've piked on a cocktail stick. I'm using Vallejo Game Air Flat Tan here. I'm working at 15 PSI, so I'm working at really low PSI guys. Apologies if the camera loses focus, it's really hard for me to get it to focus on such a tiny object. Here I'm using Vallejo Game Air Light Skin Tone. I'm just focusing on the top surface and the front of the face and as you'll see the tans being left behind on the side of the cheeks and the side of the face which gives a nice three dimensional look to the head. Again apologies for the camera focusing problems guys. Now it's time to base coat the miniature. I've turned the PSI up a little bit here, I'm working at about 18 PSI and I'm base coating using Vallejo Game Air Imperial Blue. The most important thing whilst lying down the base coat is to make sure that it's a nice even smooth coverage. If it doesn't seem smooth and even on the first pass, go back over it when it dries with one more pass. But we're looking for a nice, solid, smooth, even coverage. Here I'm using Vallejo Game Air Magic Blue and I've dropped my compressor down to 15 psi now guys and I'm working at much closer range about half an inch to an inch away from the model and I'm only feathering the airbrush trigger back lightly because I want to make sure that the paint goes in to all the centre of the panels and leaves some of that Imperial Blue behind. The airbrush I'm using here is a, a water Custom Microm CMC airbrush and this makes doing this job super simple as it has such a fine needle, needle nozzle set. This has got to be one of my favourite parts of painting a miniature actually adding the next layer of paint and starting to see the panels really starting to pop and come out and it's a very simple task to do the most important thing is to take your time lower your PSI on your compressor work closely on the miniature and make sure that the paints not too thick or too thin if the paints too thick you'll get speckle marks on the miniature and if the paints too thin you'll get spider like strains and marks on your miniature so always test on some sprue first of all to make sure that you're spraying the paint correctly
I'm starting to add extreme highlights now using Vallejo Game Air Electric Blue and I'm concentrating on the extreme surfaces of the miniature where I think that the highlight would be. You have to be a little bit careful here because if you go too too much with the highlight you can make the miniature start to look a little chalky. All of the parts that are due to be painted in a metallic finish are going to be base coated in Vallejo Model Air Black. The leather tassels coming from the shoulder pauldrons are painted in XV88 by Games Workshop. The cloth hanging by the Space Marines legs are painted using Games Workshop's Mephiston Red.
the base gets a base coat of Vallejo Game Air Earth. Now I'm going to start painting the metallics starting with the gold. So using Dark Stars Classic Gold we'll be painting the shoulder pauldron edges and the haft of the thunder hammer. The gun and the hammer from the Thunder Hammer is going to be painted in old silver by Dark Star Molten Metals. I'll paint some of the vents and some of the detailing on the back of the Terminator's armour in Dark Stars Molten Metals Bronze. Here I'm adding shading to the Thunder Hammer using Dark Star Molten Metals Steel Colour and mixing it with the Old Silver Colour. I'm trying to create a true metallic metal finish. Now I'm no expert on this technique of uh, TMM guys but I'm just learning and I think with a little effort in mixing the colours together and adding some subtle shadows and some subtle highlights you can get a pleasing result especially for the tabletop
part of the Thunder Hammer on the haft is painted using Games Workshop Screamer Pink. Here I'm highlighting some of the areas of the gold using Dark Stars Molten Metals Fine Gold. Some very subtle weathering is being added using a sponge. I'm just lightly pressing the sponge onto the surface of the model using Vallejo Model Air Hull Red. Now it's time to do a pin wash on the miniature. I'm using MIG Ammo's panel line wash black blue for this purpose. I place a little in a shot glass after shaking it vigorously. This is an enamel based product guys as opposed to acrylic but it works really well at picking out all the fine cracks and crevices and really highlights or shades as it would be the panels that we want to. Any mistakes that are made in this process can be easily cleared up with just white spirit.
all of the metallics are given a wash using Agrax Earthshade. Normally I'd use Norn Oil on the Thunder Hammer and on the gun, but I'm being completely honest here guys, I've run out of Norn Oil, as you do and we all do, so I decided to wash the gun and the hammer using Agrax Earthshade, which leaves like an oily effect, which is no bad thing. The base is also washed with Agrax Earthshade. The face is going to get a wash of Reichland Flesh Shade only into the extreme recesses of the face. So I'm being very careful here. I'm not washing the whole face, just placing it into the cracks and crevices of the head. Here I'm highlighting the hammer using the Dark Star's Molten Metal Silver Colour. And it's more like an overbrush than a dry brush. So the tip of the brush is moist with a paint, but it's not heavily loaded. The cloth is given a wash with Games Workshop's Caraborn Crimson. A very highly favoured technique of the Games Workshop's heavy metal team is the hard edge highlight miniatures. On certain miniatures I don't like the look of this but on Space Marine Armour I think it looks really cool. So rolling the bristles of the brush into a really sharp point I've mixed a 50-50 mix so one drop of Vallejo Model Air White and one drop of Vallejo Game Air Electric Blue and I'm just going round the extreme edges of the miniature and just highlighting very gently just to create a sharp and very interesting highlight.
secure and place in a decal onto the shoulder pauldron of the Praetor. I've used decal medium here as this will help the decal set down onto the surface. The decal medium is from Vallejo. Doing exactly the same again with the ultramarine symbol on the other shoulder pauldron. I'm just highlighting some of the purple areas of the haft using Vallejo Game Air Warlord Purple. After the Corridor Crimson had dried, I'm highlighting back up the cloth using Games Workshop's Mephiste and Red, leaving some of the wash in the recesses behind to create a really nice effect. Here I'm adding the most subtle of weathering to the miniature using AK Interactive's Rust Streaks. I'm very careful not to overdo it on this miniature and just add tiny amounts. The leather tassels were washed with Agrax Earthshade. After allowing that to dry, I then highlight them using Vallejo Game Air Leather Brown. The tassels are giving a hard edge highlight of a 50-50 mix of leather brown and bone white. So only the extreme edges of each tassel get a highlight and this will really make those tassels pop. 
big white decals on a miniature can sometimes look a little cartoony. So to rectify this, I slightly weathered them. I've added some magic blue to the sponge and I'm just very gently dabbing away at the miniature just to weather those decals just a little. To add further highlights to the hammer and to the gun, I'm using Dark Star Molten Metals Silver Colour. Here I'm going to be adding some snow to the base using Walder Snow. I'll put a link to some of the new types of products that I've used in this video in the description box below. So if you want to pick these products up for yourself, follow the description box links. This product is really good. It's acrylic base, so you can actually add extra effects with this snow by thinning it down with water to make the snow look thinner or thicker to your own desire. You can also let it dry and add another layer on top to make really, really thick powdery white snow. I really hope you like this video guys and again I'd like to say a huge thank you to my YouTube channel sponsors Goblin Gaming who help support my channel. Please check out the description box down below and you'll find a direct link to their web store. Also for the products that I've used in this video as well check the description box and I'll leave links to those products as well guys. Please leave a comment on this video guys I really like reading your comments. Also, tickle that like button if you enjoyed it as well. And thank you for, very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.